Hi everyone, welcome to the beginning of a fun series I'm really excited to start. Um, it's going to be making this app right here pretty much. I've already made it and we'll just go through step by step on how to do something like this. So we've got the map right here and a bunch of these locations. There's like a little local database um, for the app and it's got all this information about farmers markets in the US. Okay, and when you click on one of the markers it opens up this pop-up menu and you can see, okay, they sell organic and baked goods and whatever. So all that information about them. And then also on mobile, it's got GPS. And you also have this, ni this nice feature right here, um, a search bar, where you can search for like a city. So if I want to go to like um, Rally, however you pronounce that, um, North Carolina, hopefully it'll take me there. Okay, and you see that I'm, I'm here. So that's pretty cool. And now let's get into a little bit of um, the setup, how I want to set up my code to do this all. Okay. Okay. So some of the main features that I want to have in this app will be to interact with the local database, um, click on one of the markers, the one, one of those marker icons, and then the pop-up shows all the information about it. And then that search bar in the top, right. And also the, um, GPS needs to be enabled on mobile. Okay. So the main app or the root class, um, what's going to be in there? I want to keep this very sort of bare bones because I want the logic to be in, in other classes. Okay, so for my main.py um, Python code pretty much here on the left, I'll have on start, the on start method defined in my main app class, and that should initialize the GPS, um, start the database connection, and um, I'm going to instantiate the search pop up menu. That's like when you click on that search bar, um, that'll be instantiated but not open. And then in the KV code, basically what my, my root uh, widget and hierarchy will be here, I'll use a box layout and then put an empty toolbar at the top. And then I'll have a float layout as the main body. And inside there I'll have um, the, the map view, which I'll call a farmer's map view because I'm going to um, alter it a little bit. And as well as the map view, I'll have that little floating action button kind of in the bottom corner. Okay, and you can put basically widgets on top of each other inside of a float layout. So that's why I'm using the float layout there for the body. Okay, the farmer's map view class. So it's basically just inheriting from the map view. So on the left, we'll, we'll look at the Python code. I'm gonna have a couple functions defined in here. I'll have one called start getting markets in FOV. FOV stands for field of view, okay? And basically this just starts a timer to actually um, retrieve all of the locations inside the field of view. Because if the user like pans around the map, it'll try to call this function like, I don't know, a thousand times. I don't actually want to do all the, the hard sort of the hard work behind looking up all those locations in the database that, you know, a thousand times, I just want to do it once when they move the map. Okay. So basically it'll be like a, a time trigger. If they move the map and they haven't moved or zoomed or whatever in one second, then actually find all the locations and put them on the map. Okay. So that's what start getting markets in FOV does get markets in FOV actually queries the database using some SQL. Um, I'll be using the SQLite 3 module in Python. Um, okay, so that, that's going to query the database and say, get me all the markets between this latitude and longitude, um, latitude and longitude pair, I guess. And then uh, for each one of those that I get back, call the add market function. The add market function will pretty much just put um, the marker onto the map. So each one of those little blue marker images will be populated on the map in that add market function. Okay, onto the KV code for the farmer's map view class. I'll work with the um, inherent on zoom, on lat, and on lawn functions. And basically, anytime the map is zoomed or the lat changes or the lawn changes, I'll call that start getting markets in field of view. Okay, so like I said, anytime the user does something on the map, like move around or zoom, start trying to get the markets in their new field of view. Okay, let's move on. The market marker class. Basically, this is just that little um, image, and there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, it'll inherit from the map marker pop-up, because it's just a normal pop-up. And I'm going to define one function in Python called open marker pop-up. So basically, when you click on this marker, it'll call the open marker pop-up, and that um, basically creates that, that new dialog box, um, and it populates it with all the information. Okay, so that's all it is. The dialog box, by the way, is going to be called the location pop-up menu class. That's why I have that written on the left. And then in the KV code, super simple. Um, I'm just going to work with the on release function, which is default, or which is, uh, it comes with the map marker pop-up class. So I'll work with on release, 
So anytime you release a click from um, this marker, call the open marker pop-up function. Okay, that's that. Okay, so now this is what pops up when you actually click on the marker. This is the location pop-up menu class. Um, I'm gonna inherit from something that I called the list MD dialog. This is not actually a standard widget in the Kivi MD package. Um, this is one that I sort of created on my own through subclassing a little bit um, some of the other dialog menus in the KiviMD package. I probably won't cover that a whole lot in the video because it's a little bit complicated, but I'll give it a quick rundown. Basically, it's just like a really long scrolling menu of things um, inside of a dialog box, okay? So um, the stuff that we have inside of the location pop-up menu is a populate function, which basically um, will set the text um, for all of the, the sort of values so you can see in the in the pop-up you've got like a key like address website Facebook and then a value on the right side so the key value um, pairs I'll kind of be setting it up like that so populate basically sets all of the values so all those things on the right side of the pop-up there and then also get record um, this will cur uh, query the local database to get all info for this location so basically how it works is um, I'll send it the name of the location and it'll call the get record function and pass the name and then it'll do some work, some little SQL command and get all the information for this location based on that name and then uh, it populates those text fields. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Um, I'm gonna have a class called GPS Helper. This is just pure Python, there's no KV code associated. Um, this is just to get the GPS working on mobile. I'll use the plier module um, as sort of my, my helper tool there. So in my init function for my uh, GPS helper class, it should just start the GPS. And then when you're working with GPS and, and plier, you've got basically two things you wanna work with, two functions. One's called on GPS location. On GPS location is called anytime your phone receives a new GPS location, and you can set how frequently you want that to happen. So for me, I want the on GPS location to start the blinking of the little marker that shows where you are in the map and also center the map on your GPS location if it hasn't done that yet. Okay, and then on auth status is basically if the user changes the permissions in their phone and allows or declines uh, GPS permission to your app or if they just decline it right away at the start, um, I, wanna, I wanna pop up to display that says just a little text saying, hey, um, I don't have your GPS information, so the app isn't gonna work properly. Okay, and then the pop-up that says that, I'm gonna display through a function that I call open GPS access pop-up. Okay, so that's pretty, um, pretty simple. Uh, just a nice little alert dialog box. Okay, the GPS blinker class. This is what I was referencing in this, in this last slide, I'll go back. So when I say uh, on GPS location begins GPS blinker blinking, GPS Blinker is this widget right here. So it, it's uh, got some Python and some KV code. <clears throat> you can see I just took a little picture of it. It's a little um, basically blinking marker, okay? So it's a circle on the map and it blinks kind of in and out. So it attracts your attention. It shows where you are. All right, so the Python code, I want this to inherit from the map marker class um, from the map view widget or the map, the map view um, flower from Kivy Garden because I need it to go somewhere on the map, so I have to set a latitude and longitude for it. Okay, and then I have one function which is called begin blinking, and um, I don't wanna call it more than once because I just want the animation to go once and then repeat, okay? And then in the KV code, it'll be a little bit complicated here because what I want is actually um, two circles for this widget. I have one circle kind of in, in the center and then the other one is changing radius, okay? So we'll, we'll work with a little bit of animations and a little bit of uh, canvas instructions there to create those two circles. They'll have different colors as well because one is changing transparency. Okay, and now the last um, major class that I wanna have right here is called the search pop-up menu. So again, when you click that um, top right button, you can see in the image on the right there, the little uh, search icon. I want this little pop-up menu to show up and then you can type in a little address and then hit take me there and it should zoom to wherever your address is on the map if it can find it. To do this, I'm using a, um, a service called HERE, H-E-R-E, -E, and they have a really nice REST API. You have to sign up, it's a free account, and then basically you can use the REST API and you send um, like an HTTP request with the address and then you'll get something back and it tells you the latitude and longitude for that. 
okay? So we'll, we'll get into how you like set up that account. It's super easy, super quick. That'll be in one of the later videos. Okay, anyway, okay, so for this class, um, in the init method, I just wanna set the size and position so it's always at the same spot um, on the screen. And then I'll give it a callback function, which is basically called whenever the user hits take me there, it'll call this callback function. And what the callback function should do is get the address that they wrote and then call the geocode underscore get underscore uh, lat lon and it should pass the address to it. Okay, and then geocode get lat lon uses, like I said, the here service to get latitude and longitude um, from your address that you pass. Okay, and then last we've got the get lat lon from rec, which stands for request. Basically, um, the HTTP call from the previous function, geocode get lat lon, is asynchronous, and when it's finished, I'll have it call the get lat lon from rec, um, which basically just decodes the response from the here REST API service, and um, I'll get the latitude and longitude from the response, and then I'll center the map on that, and that's all it takes. Okay, so hopefully this um, setup makes sense to you, and you saw what we're gonna create, and you're excited about this. Um, so stay tuned, in the next video we will get to coding right away. All right, thanks for watching.